I remember during the introduction, I was unable to complete due to technical challenges. But we are having three presentations that have been presented. But I would also want to introduce two panelists as we are going into our last 20 minutes of the scheduled time. And because I didn't complete the introduction, I didn't mention to say, when we visited HIFO, we did a report to the Minister of Health of Zambia. We later went back and we had a meeting with the team of experts in Zambia. Minister of Health was quite happy with the technology, but Minister of Health does not make decisions. And they insisted that experts who have been using HIFO be linked to the experts in Zambia. And Zago has been very instrumental in organizing the experts. And I'm sure after the presentations, they have certain concerns, questions, and some clarifications. So the last 20 minutes, 20 minutes will be dedicated to that. But allow me to introduce the other two panelists. And I will request Dr. Schumer to introduce the executive members or the prominent experts that are there. I cannot see them for now. Uh, we have Prof. Mohammed from Egypt. Uh, he is a professor of interventional radiology, Cairo University in Egypt. And his machine, which is in the north, is actually in a private setting. He is the founder of Haifu Egypt, the first private, private center focused ultrasound treatment of tumors in the Middle East and Africa. He is an elected fellow of Arab Society of Inter Interventional Radiology, and he is a board member of Egyptian Society of Interventional Radiology. We have another interesting panelist. This one is the, no other than Dr. Ajay. Dr. Ajay is actually a fellow of the Western uh, College of Surgeons, West African College of Surgeons. And the, Dr. Ajay was actually driven by passion to help enhance the quality of medical service in his country of Nigeria. And he started Nodika Fertility Center in Lagos, pioneering a wide range of assisted reproductive services across the nation. The clinic specializes in in vitro fertilization and the treatment of infertility for couples facing fertility challenges in marriages and has since inception expanded into two other major cities in Nigeria. And he is the first to introduce HIFO in Nigeria. So you are welcome as panelists. Dr. Schumer, any members, prominent members of the executive that you'd want to introduce? As soon as we introduce them, yeah, thank you we'll so much. End the... Yes, Doc? Yeah, thank you. Th thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Mzaza. And uh, thank you so much to the presenters. Uh, I am hearing the presentations for the second time. Um, and there's no doubt, uh, basically, that uh, this is a technology that uh, Zambia needs. Uh, as we have heard already from you, that Ministry of Health is already in agreement that we need this technology. Yeah, so unfortunately, we do not have the full executive with us this morning due to other competing activities. But we do have, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge that uh, oncology is here and head of oncology, Dr. Luis Banda is here. And I've also seen Dr. Paul. Kamfwa. Kamfwa, although he's a gynecologist, but he's, okay, let's see. Kamfwa, yes, it's very good to see him here. Greetings, Doc. Um, 
we have uh, from our executive, we have uh, Dr. Mwansa Keti Lubea, uh, who has been instrumental in spearheading uh, some of the OBGY uh, activities uh, in Zambia. We have uh, Dr. Vanilla Banda, we have Victor Sichone, uh, all the way from the uh, Copper Belt uh, province of Zambia. Uh, on the call, and we do have uh, Dr. Chambwa, uh, who is also a gynecologist. Uh, yeah, so basically these are the members that are here this morning, but we do also have, I think, non-OBGY members who have joined, and this is very uh, gratifying. We are so grateful that uh, they joined us. Uh, as you know, uh, HIFU will affect a lot of women. So we did extend invitation to some of the women. Uh, we do have a, a, a women's association um, and some of these now are coming from uh, that forum, Dr. Montanga, Mapani, although pediatrician, but uh, her interest here and also uh, we know that pediatrics is also affected by uh, the oncological issues. So it is good to see that the pediatricians are also uh, joining. Uh, we do have uh, Cynthia Shawa here. And um, is there anyone else that needs Acknowledgement, I think basically this is, oh, I hope I have not left any one of us out. So we are so grateful to the team for organizing, for bringing us together. Uh, my appeal would be that we share the presentation and uh, we should be able to discuss this as members log in and uh, they uh, listen in, understand the concept, and uh, we should be able to forge ahead with this uh, initiative. So thank you very much, Dr. Mzaza. And thank you to the team for the wonderful uh, thanks, presentation. Mm. The floor is open to questions. Antonio, I may not be able to see the hands. Please, you can help me point out those who have raised their hands to ask or to make a comment. The floor is open. We can open the uh, camera and uh, microphone. Really, any doctor want to ask the questions? Dr. Muhammad, your hand is up. So please. Yeah. Yes. Can you? Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, good afternoon uh, for my friends in China. Uh, I think this is a great moment uh, to see uh, more than uh, center, more than one center in Africa. As we started this 10, uh, nine years ago, it's now I am very happy to see our motherland, Africa, uh, to uh, invite this very uh, prime technology to help our people in Africa. I'm very happy to share this presentation with David, with Professor David and my friend Raymond's, and of course my dear friend uh, Rosie. Uh, I I I uh, I just want to say to all of our friends in Africa, uh, we have a good experience in Africa now. Dr. Raymond's, Dr. Uh, Ajaye, and our center, our center now did more than 500. Okay, sorry, we have lost. And now you know it's okay now. Yeah, Hello? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is a good time to promote this technology in our motherland, Africa, and to broad the spectrum of usage of HIFU. You can see Dr. David Cranston and, and his team in Oxford use HIFU in uh, and many diseases like uh, sarcoma, like uh, HCC, like uh, hepatic metastasis, 
And we are also in Egypt applying this treatment for many diseases, malignant and benign. So I think we should push so much uh, applications of HIFU and uh, uh, our center is opened all the time to all my friends in Africa, if you need any help. And of course, uh, Shangqing University and HIFU uh, company uh, provide all of support. And this is a great moment, uh, like an emotional moment, not only the scientific moment, because this is a good and big dream to see this technology in many African countries. I am very happy to hear that Zambia will open a center and that I, wa I was very happy when Dr. Ajaye opened his centers also. This is just uh, a greeting from, uh, greeting from my side to all my friends in Africa. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, may I ask you uh, to make a comment because I know there are oncologists that also uh, uh, attend this webinar. As an yeah. internal radiologist, okay, I know you have also broadened the indications uh, beyond the oncology and into interventional radiology where you can treat these, those, uh, uh, those indications are for uh, intervention radiology. So can you make a comment on that? So the, uh, the, uh, attend the, uh, the experts attended this webinar will also know uh, the potential of this technology for their yes. field. Yes, yes, uh, Rosie. Uh, in Egypt, we uh, expand the application. Uh, we did more than 100 cases of pancreatic cancer with very good results. Uh, if, uh, the, like Dr. David uh, said to us, Dr. Cranston, uh, oh, maybe the only treatment if the small size pancreatic cancer, maybe adjuvant for chemotherapy and medium sized pancreatic cancer, and maybe as a palliative pain management in large size pancreatic cancer. Also, we introduce uh, uh, a new technique in Egypt, uh, treatment of cholangiocarcinoma uh, for uh, pillary uh, tree. We treated uh, maybe uh, nine to 10 cases of cholangiocarcinoma with very good results. We treated a uh, multiple uh, broad spectrum of metastatic lesion from colon, from breast and uh, from uh, pancreas. Also, we treated uh, metastatic bony lesions in the pelvis, in the chest wall, in the humerus, uh, with very good results, especially regarding to the pain management. I noticed there is a pediatrician in our uh, audience. We treated a uh, few numbers of uh, uh, of pediatrics age group uh, treating uh, aggressive fibromatosis and treated uh, aneurysmal bone cyst in assistance of other interventional method and uh, with, with very good result in uh, fibromatosis and the small tumor. Uh, and uh, I treated last month a very uh, astonishing case of uh, this my tumor insinuated in the hepatic hilum originating from the duodenal uh, wall, and we waiting for the result. And this is uh, this patient not amenable for any type of surgery. Uh, so I think uh, with your help as a Chongqing and with the help of the society, we can provide a long list of treatment. Also, of course, our main this is from uh, uterine wall endometriosis. We treated all of this. And I, I want to tell you, uh, don't worry. The HIFO is very safe treatment, but you must uh, train very well. You must uh, follow the rules of, high, uh, of the treatment. Uh, take time. Take your time to make a decision. Make a plan before treating the patient. Please, please, please do, do a simulation before treating the patient. Prank the patient one time before the treatment and put, put her or him on the machine. Make a clear plan for the treatment. Make a decision. 
all of us, uh, like uh, in Chongqing, uh, in Oxford, in Egypt, can give you an advice. Of course, the Chinese doctors are the most expert, all of us uh, learning from them. And the second time when you're treating the patient, treat it very good. Uh, we also provide a good improvement in anesthesia technique. This is very important. At the beginning, we put the cancer patient in deep anesthesia. Now we put all the patient on conscious sedation level, no need for hospital stay. All of our malignant patients leaving the center after four or five hours directly to the home, we make sure there is no complication. And this is, I think this is a good achievement for uh, most of us. Uh, so please uh, be happy uh, to introduce this technology in your country. And if you need any help, any help we are here, all of us uh, in your pack, because this is like a dream to see our motherland uh, promoting this technology to our poor people and private sector. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Can we have Dr. Kamfa? Kamfa, it's your turn. You can put your hand down, Dr. Ahmed. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Antelli. And uh, thank you all the discussants, or the panelists for the presentation. But what I wanted, uh, oh, by the way, I'm a gyno-oncologist practicing at Cancer Diseases Hospital. What I wanted to find out uh, from the panelists is, uh, the use of HIFO in gain, particularly endometrial or ovarian cancer, has it been explored and to what extent for endometrial and ovarian cancer? Thank you. Uh, I, I can pick up on this question. Okay, the, those are the two uh, uh, indications you mentioned are not the indications for HIFO yet, okay? But just like the laparoscopic surgery, okay, how it became the state of art, I think view uh, HIFU entering ob by starting uh, doing the benign uh, diseases, okay, is just the, uh, and the, as, the, and as the early stage, okay. So as more and more ob learn this technology, and I'm sure uh, the, uh, by integrating this technology with their interest, uh, clinical interests, we'll see the growing list of indications, okay. And uh, there's one thing, uh, one indication, cervical cancer, I think it's also on your mind, okay? And uh, which we did not include in today's discussion because that involves another small modality, okay? Portable small modality. Actually, we, Dr. Muzaza knows, uh, and visit, uh, upon visited us and uh, saw how it's operated there. And we, so this is actually, uh, there's another cancer indication can be done, which is the cervical cancer, okay? So this small modality, also the principle is the same, is the focus of the ultrasound and uh, can treat from chronic cervicitis, which will reduce the uh, risk of H, uh, HPV infection. It also can treat persistent HPV infection and also a stage uh, 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 the stage one, uh, not a stage one, the pre uh, a cancer lesion. Okay, so. Uh, in some of the Chinese centers has already brought to treat the stage one cancer. So I already had uh, extensive discussion with uh, Dr. Muzaza, okay? And due to the time reframe, so we did not include this uh, uh, small modality and the discussion around the cervical cancer using HIFU in today's panel. But I'm sure this will be a tremendous interest to Zago, okay? And if there's such a need, uh, we, we can organize another webinar, okay? But there's a different uh, a small modality and it's a portable. I think it's very important, important it's a portable, okay? So, um, uh, so I just want to make this uh, additional comment. Thank you very much, Professor, for highlighting that. I think you, you can take note, Zago, uh, there are a number of issues that are being addressed by this company. One of them is the cervicitis the professor has mentioned, 
as well as the Valva lesions. I think that will be a discussion of another day. And also propose, in fact, there was the prophet with the Zago. Zago, you could take it up, you could make arrangements and still have a same way for that. I'd seen Dr. Ajay's hand was up. Yes. You wanted to make a comment, Dr. Ajay? Uh, yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zaza. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here on this panel with our friends who have shared their experience and then to be with their friends from Zambia as well. Um, I think um, just to join uh, Professor Mohamed that, uh, uh, and what uh, Raymond has said, this technology actually, I think, if anywhere, it actually tailor made for Africa. Um, because um, look at this typical surgical word um, or an uh, operation theater. How many people are involved? Okay. Especially in this part of the world where we know that doctors are in short supply. With HIFU, you can have a, a doctor, a nurse, and some, because it's like sedation, you don't need, even need a, a, an anesthetist, a nurse could do that. And so this, this thing, really, and this technology, and then you don't need blood transfusion. You don't. So there's so many advantages, but I'll look at my our own experience. We just started, we treated our first patient June 25th this year. And so far, we've treated about 42 patients now. And uh, the experience from this, okay, maybe because we are always known as a fertility clinic, because we've had a fertility center for over 18 years now. I can tell you that the greatest number of people that we're seeing have, have infertility as well. And um, just like everybody has said, it's uterine sparing, so they're likely to get pregnant uh, faster than well, if you do your myomectomy, they're likely to have uh, vaginal delivery after the, when they even get pregnant. These are things that I think they're very important to us. But one other thing that we have seen, which I don't think um, Raymond, because I've listened to Raymond a few times, is the incidence of adenomyosis in this environment. We have seen quite about, maybe about 20% of our patients that we've seen so far also have adenomyosis, you know? And that's, we see that this uh, technology is very good for management of adenomyosis as well. Though there's some, we need to manage the expectation of the patient. And like uh, from the experience from uh, Raymond also, we saw, we've seen more hypo-intense lesions, which is good for high. So I think by and large, uh, this technology is just a wonderful technology for us um, because also the patients can go back to work earlier. And the fact that we are going to also look a lot about their fertility vis-a-vis um, -vis when we do IVF for them after this, what are the results going to be like? So we are actually uh, waiting with very, um, holding our breath to see the outcome where the first patient is just doing three months now. So we're just going to be three months next week. So we, we're going to do the three months ass assessment. But what we saw from the first one month shrinkage is just so similar to what uh, uh, Raymond also presented. So we, this is something that I wish that we could see how we can spread this technology more in Africa. So that, that's just my take. Thank you very much, Doctor. Doctor Muzaza, uh, do we have? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, can I make a comment regarding uh, after Doctor Ajayi's uh, 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 share sharing that uh, about uh, the training about the training program? Okay. Um, uh, so I uh, Raymond, when you were trained. Uh, uh, with our doctors, I think, and also Hamid, okay, I think that the, uh, the two of you has all have undergone a quite a lengthy time to learn this technology. I'm, I'm very happy to share with you that now 
uh, in my uh, talk, I said, oh, now we have uh, international training program ready, okay? And the second is that um, the two centers, Dr. Ajayi Center started the operation in mid of May, okay? And within three months, one of his uh, doctor he assigned to learn this technology is being trained, means almost independent to do it, okay? And, uh, and uh, in uh, parallel, the Malaysian center, we opened the Malaysian center, the first Malaysian center in July. Dr. Silva Superman, okay, which is a leading KOL uh, in the APH, okay, and uh, who also cross the, uh, uh, the, who also is a, has a tremendous interest on fertility, okay. He learned in two months, so he passed the oral test. Okay, so I'm I'm here to say that okay, uh, as the uh, doctors I learn about this technology, interested to learn. Now we have a way more optimized the training program ready. Okay, and the second thing is that for Africa, okay, because for the MOH uh, of Zambia uh, in that letter to Haifu, they mentioned that a training program has to be uh, part of setting up the service and with the professional organizations, okay? And we also had the uh, intense discussion with uh, Dr. Muzaza, how to integrate into this, into the training, uh, doctor's training, okay? And I think if we have more countries join this initiative, uh, we probably will uh, uh, set up a, a HIFU Academy for Africa so that uh, uh, relying on the, our existing centers and also by working with the professional societies from each respective country, we can tailor this uh, the training even better to the needs of the uh, African doctors. Thank you. Um, Zambia, we are waiting for consent questions from you. Just note that Haifu is still holding one position for you for training. It's on that the, there is COVID, that's why no one can come. I can't see any hand. Antonio, is there a hand that I'm missing? Um, we are having a time overrun and seeing that there are no hands, I will ask the Secretary General for Zago to make her final comment, a wrap up comment. I think this has been two hours from the time we started. We had promised that it would be two hours. We had a few minutes. Okay. But I think we have managed to catch up unless there's something very heated. Dr. Schumer. And thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Mzaza. And again to the presenters, this has been a very, very enlightening moment for us. And the presentations are, are very helpful uh, in terms of uh, how we can uh, move forward. Um, we would like to just take the opportunity um, to say thank you for the privilege that uh, you could think of us as Zambia. Uh, we do look forward to collaborating with the organizers and uh, to see how the different uh, pieces can come together and bring us to a point where we have the HIFU machine and the trainings, uh, a, we, we begin to select uh, whoever needs to be trained and also um, uh, a point where we launch this major activity so going forward, uh, I would uh, uh, just encourage, I think, to, for us to continue communicating. Uh, we know we have the channel through you, uh, Dr. Mzaza, 
but uh, as one of the presenters has said, it will be good to begin to connect with them so that we begin to uh, collaborate at that level so that we understand a bit more of what is happening in the three, particularly the three African countries that have already uh, started the program. Yeah, so with that, thank you very much. And uh, we want to thank the other members that uh, managed to join or the, the Zambian team that has managed to join. And we do look forward also to the CME uh, on valvo lesions and cervicitis and cervical cancer. We think that that will be very interesting and we are hopeful that uh, at that time, uh, as we share this particular link for this presentation that people would have gone through it and they will take more interest in joining the other CME. So we may have started slow, but we will soon begin to run. So thank you very much, Dr. Mzaza. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Dr. Mzaza, uh, can I, uh, before the, uh, we conclude this, can I make a, a, a suggestion that uh, for everyone who attended this webinar, let's take a group photo online. Since we cannot take a photo offline, so may I ask everyone to open your uh, video, okay, so that we can have a, a picture, okay? We can have a picture, group picture taken, okay? So, so all of us can cher cherish this moment when one day, the service set up in Zambia, we know it started from here. Thank you. So, Thank uh, you. Uh, so Chusi, when you uh, see everyone uh, open their video and let us know, and so we're all going to look at the, the, uh, the screen and you can take the picture. Yes, yes, Professor Rosie. Okay, uh, may I? Okay. Ask everyone okay, to so, yeah. Yeah. just uh, yes. maybe I will come down three, two, one. Let me count three, two, one. I will take the photo. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I've take I've took. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's finished. It's done. Okay, so we'll yeah, share the photo with Dr. Muzaza, and uh, Dr. Muzaza will share with the Zago members. Okay, and uh, thank you, thank you very much for uh, uh, take your uh, weekend time, and uh, thank you, Raymond, David, and uh, Dr. Hamid, and uh, Dr. Ajayi, and uh, um, we hope to move this forward with Zago and. Uh, um, and looking forward to set up this service in the near future in Zambia. Okay, uh, turn, turn the microphone to you, uh, Dr. Mzaga. Thank you very much. I think you have wrapped up very well. Thanks to all the panelists, the presenters, and the members of Zago who have attended. We will continue working in the background with HIFU, Zago, and the Minister of Health. In fact, we are scheduling a meeting next week with the team from HIFU. They will come to Beijing. It's getting cold here. It's actually eight degrees now. But uh, Chongqing is actually quite warm. They can come and enjoy some good weather in Beijing. Thank you very much. And this brings us to the end of this webinar. <laughs>